Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the Epox 4G 4A Plus motherboard. What is included in this package are all the appropriate manuals as well as some software and drivers. You also have one ATA-133 cable, you have a floppy cable, and you also have a product here which goes plugged directly into the motherboard. It gives you an extra COM port as well as the game port right here and the motherboard itself. This is an Intel 845G AGP set chipset based board and what that really does for you is give you USB version 2, it also gives you an onboard NIC, onboard audio, onboard video, so a lot of things. Let me just go over some of the key features in this particular motherboard. Right here is where the Pentium 4 goes installed. We have three banks of DDR memory up to two gigabytes. Right here is your primary and secondary IDE. Right here is your RAID. This is High Point 372 RAID. Your floppy controller goes installed right there. Now right here we have the post LED. This is a power on self test. I'll just show you how that works. Just to show you this power on self test LED in operation, I have removed the memory from the system just to get an error code. Right away it detects a code of C1, referring to the manual, that means it has something to do with detecting the memory. So again, this is excellent for diagnosing any kind of problems you might be having with your motherboard. And also right here we have the six PCI slots, one AGP slot, as well as one power connection. That's great because a lot of Pentium 4 motherboards are coming with two or three power connections and then you need a special power supply. You don't in this particular situation. Also on this board there's three places to plug fans onto it. One right here, there's also one up there, and also one right here. This board does support six channel audio. Right here is your audio connections. Also right here we have the Ethernet controller. This is a Realtek RTL8100B LAND chipset. And right here we have two USB ports, version 2. There's another two over here. This is your LPT port or printer port. We have the VGA right here, as well as a COM port right here. And we have the keyboard and the mouse right here. I will be looking at a couple of key features in this particular BIOS. First of all, looking at the advanced chipset feature. And in this, you can really go in here and tweak some video settings as well as the DRAM or the memory timings. Now you can go on manual setting where you can manually set all these timings or you can go by speed which is really an automatic setting or if you're really really adventurous and you want to try a turbo mode you can do that. If you go and select turbo mode right off the bat and increase the front side bus however your system is probably going to lock. I would if you're overclocking I would go into manual mode and just adjust it bit by bit or if you're really going to a very very high front side bus go ahead here and go by speed which is really an automatic setting. Further down here we have the system BIOS cacheable, the video BIOS cacheable, also a choice here to select the AGP aperture size. Within the integrated peripherals part of this BIOS you can go in here and enable things like your primary IDE, your secondary IDE and also go in here and enable or disable things like your USB controller, your USB support, things like your audio, your onboard NIC card as well as the onboard RAID. This BIOS also has an area called PC Health Status. Now within here you can go and select such things as the CPU warning temperature and what that is is what it says. It basically is a temperature which will warn you at when the CPU reaches it. I have it at 60. You can go ahead here and really select what temperatures you want it to warn you at. Now also if the system goes over a certain temperature that you specify, for instance 70C, if this system was to go at 70C, it would shut down automatically. Now why is that good? Well, your fan could fail or your cooler could slip off your CPU. An excellent option here for possibly saving your system. Also within this particular area, you can see the current system temperature, the current CPU temperature, your fan speeds, and all of your voltages. My favorite part to any BIOS is going in first and seeing what are the overclocking options. Well, let's go in here and have a look. It's called a frequency voltage control. In here you have all kinds of wonderful overclocking options. The CPU front side bus in here can go all the way up to 200. You also have some memory frequency options in here and something that's really important is an AGP PCI clock. So you can select it to automatic 
or if you have a very very high front side bus you can go ahead here and manually select it to AGP being 66 and the PCI being 33 megahertz for the bus speed. Why is that important? Well, when you increase your front side bus settings, what happens is the AGP normally goes up and up and up, meaning that the system is not going to be stable. This option really ensures that you're going to get the maximum overclock out of your particular CPU. Further down here in this particular part, you have all the options for the voltage settings. You can go and manually select what voltage you want to have either the CPU, the AGP, or the memory. And you can see you have options that you can really add to your default, whatever that default is. For instance, in my case here, I can set it to 1.85 for the CPU. I'm adding, of course, 0.35 to 1.5 equaling 1.85. That really holds true for all these other things here, both the AGP as well as the memory. I will be doing a couple of video tests here. Now remember, this is integrated video and it's not going to be that great at all at gaming. However, I will be looking at a 3D Mark 2001 second edition result as well as a Quake 3 Arena result. And the result is 1622. These are the settings I will be using in Quake 3 Arena. The video mode will be at 1024 by 768. The color depth is 32 bit. The geometric detail is at high. The texture detail is at max. The texture quality is 32 bit. And the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 18.7 frames per second. I'm using a program here called Psy Software Sandra just to give you some idea of the CPU results as well as the memory results. I'm using a 2.26 gigahertz CPU at around 3 gigahertz and I'll show you the results with that overclock. Right here we're getting a CPU result of 5,000 466. The CPU multimedia benchmark result is 11,558. And the memory benchmark of 2,564. Now this is using a front side bus of 175. This motherboard overall has pretty much everything you're ever going to need in a motherboard. Onboard video, onboard audio, onboard NIC, also has RAID, ATA-133, USB version 2, it goes on and on. Now going back to the onboard video, it's not meant really for 3D gaming because as you've seen, the results are very poor. But when it comes to 2D graphics as well as text, it is surprisingly very, very clear. Also with this motherboard, overclocking is very strong, which is fantastic. This board, without a question, is kick-ass. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And when you're there, you can go into their forums. You can go in there and register. Registration is completely free. You can leave your very own suggestions and comments, and you can find out all kinds of information about this product and about all the products which I video review. Until the next time, take care.